On this episode of Locked on Angels, the Halos are just past the halfway point on the season, so let's check in on Trout and Rendon. Let's get an update on Sandy and Detmers, and let's talk about those potential Halo All-Stars. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is. And yes, we are. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with John and I. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can make every Every moment more with FanDuel and as the playoffs wind down and sports stop sporting like we want them to, hey, FanDuel's got gotcha you during the summer. They're going to hook up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother John. Mike, it's our third season here at Lockdown Angels. We've been Halo fans our entire lives. We're here five days a week talking Angels baseball with you, our Locked On Everydayers. Thank you for making us part of your day or night. You know, some people like to do podcasts at night. That's fine too. Uh, and listen, on today's show, the Angels had an off day yesterday, so it gives us a little bit of a, a breather, right, Mike? And we're yes. just past the halfway point for the season this year. They played game 81 a few days ago. They've had two more since then, so we're at 83 total games, currently sitting at 36 and 47, headed into tonight's game against the A's. So since we're at the halfway point, we're checking in on the Angels. It's a little first half checkup, Michael. What do you say? Yeah, let's start with uh, some of the position players and talk about the GOAT, Mike Trout. Obviously, hurt his knee, meniscus tear, had surgery. Last update was that he was still feeling a bit sore and there wasn't any sort of activity. Well, just last week, Mike Trout said he's basically pain-free aside from the occasional soreness. He said he feels really good and he's relieved after turning the corner in his rehab. Trout said he's close to running and hitting in the cages. Currently, he's playing catch and he's jogging on the Alter G treadmill. Hey, they that got feels, that treadmill finally. That feels like <laughs> something from another world, right? And it just took, what, 12 years to get it? <laughs> yeah, Pools wasn't very happy to hear that, I suppose. He's not. Maybe because he's been in the organization, he's like, guys, since you didn't get it from me, you got to get it for Trouty. Mike said that he hopes to be back late July, but there's no official timetable. However, reporters... We were talking with Trout. They all said it sounded like it's going to be a bit quicker than that hmm. because of what Trout was saying. One of the reasons that they felt that way is because Trout said, I'm itching to get out there. Well, of course you are because this team was really good. You probably want to play with a really good team. So, Johnny, let's play a little uh, fill in the blank. I'd love for you to fill in this blank. I a like healthy, in the blank. A healthy Mike Trout with this recently improved team gives the Angels blank. A threat. A threat okay. in the lineup, a true threat in the lineup. Don't get me wrong. I think Ohapi, especially in the month of June, has been more than capable of hitting one out and breaking a game wide open. But Mike, you're going to see Trout being back in this lineup benefit guys like Taylor Ward, who hasn't had the protection he is used to over his career with Trout and Otani in this lineup. And now the spotlight has been on Taylor Ward. I actually think you might see him get better because of Trout's presence in the lineup. He might he might bat, let's see, cleanup, and then Trout might be third. But, you know, you're going to see a real threat in this lineup. Not that the guys haven't been doing a good job, but somebody that pitchers are afraid to make a mistake to. And you know that if you make a mistake to Mike Trout, he's going to take it for a ride, whether it's an extra base hit, a home run, something like that. So I think he really brings an anchor to that lineup in terms of this is a guy you don't want to make a mistake to because you could break the game wide open with a bad pitch to Mike Trout. What do you say, uh, fill in the blank here, a healthy Mike Trout with this recent improved team gives the Angels a conundrum. Mm. And here's the conundrum. 
these young guys are like, hey, nobody's going to come through. We're going to have to come through. So the conundrum is, are they going to regress? Are they going to go, well, we got mm-hmm. Trouty in the lineup. Well, he's out in the outfield. Well, he's going to bat this inning. So we just got to get the, we got to get to him, right? I I, I think that there's going to be a conundrum. Now, I, I, I appreciate what you just said about Ohapi and some of the players coming through. I do think that Mike Trout benefits this lineup. He's a threat in this lineup. But I don't want to see these guys regress. Trout, right. it won't be his fault, right? I don't want to see these guys shift back into, wow, Mike Trout is back, right? Or, wow, there's Michael Jordan walking into the room. I want to see these guys go, yeah, man, look where our team is at. Look what we've done. Look at how we've stepped up. Mike, I want you to be a part of that. We want to be a support to you. I don't want these guys to regress at all. Are you crying about Mike Trout's return? No, I'm just kidding. He just had a frog in his throat. That's fine. It happens when you're on a podcast, guys. We talked for 30 straight minutes. Uh, Listen, I agree with you. I think these guys can't regress to admiration. Um, But at the same time, they've had all this time without Mike Trout. And I think they finally understand what it means to step up and contribute to this team. And I say that because, like you said, they're the only guys that they have to count on. Ohapi, Neto, they know that this team's success is their success. And look, I know they didn't win Sunday's game, and there were a couple of dicey moments through the weekend. Not, Not, of course, like when Davis Daniel goes out there and throws eight scoreless, but when the games are close and you're trying to come back and you're thinking, man, we need somebody to come through. I mean, was Zach Neto like one for 11 this weekend? And so... That just, I mean, you felt it, right? Yeah. You felt his lack of bat in the lineup over the weekend, even though the Angels were able to pull off three wins. That's fantastic. Right. right. So I think these guys are finally at a point where they know they have to be the ones to be successful if they want the team to be successful. Another player possibly close to returning is John's favorite, Anthony Rendon. And uh, <laughs> was, that a, was that a your boy, Anthony Rendon? <laughs> your boy. Yeah. I just like saying that and then watching the comments of people who are new to the show go, you like Anthony Rendon? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then uh, you're welcome. Wash said that the hope is to have Rendon back for the last six to seven games before the break. Thought that was interesting. So that's like really, really soon. He's scheduled to face live pitching this coming weekend. So, John, fill in the blank. Rendon returning means less playing time for blank. I'm going to throw a wrinkle at you on this one, Mike. Okay. Joe Adele and Mickey Moniak. Okay. The Explain. reason I say that is because you're going to need a spot in that infield for an Anthony Rendon. Obviously, at third base. Now, he could DH, and I think it would be wise for him to DH, considering he's coming back from that, that issue. But I think you got to have Renhifo in there. And if Renhifo is not going to be at third, if Drury is going to be at second, I think Renhifo goes to right field where Mm -hmm. he can also play. He has been a great utility player playing all over the field. He doesn't do anything, any one thing in particular very well (laughs) all the time. He's capable. He's much more capable than he's been. I'll say that. But I think if they're going to try to find a way to get Renhifo in this lineup, I think it's going to come at the cost of somebody in that outfield. And I think it's going to be Moniak or Joe Adele. Now, does this all get sorted out once the trade deadline comes and goes? Absolutely. And I think if Renhifo is still on this team, it's because the Angels should extend him. They should have already extended him. But considering that he could also be on the trade block, I think these answers are going to work themselves out. But how about you, Mike? Rendon returning means less playing time for... I'm going to go with should, okay? So it should be less playing time for somebody who hasn't been playing at all, and that's Brandon Drury. Mm. I mean, the guy hasn't even been able to get back on the field, and when he's mm-hmm. on the field, he got hurt again. He wasn't effective. And so I'd rather I'd rather see a Miguel Sano uh, in there. I'd rather see a Renjifo in there, and I'd rather see like a Rendon switching off at DH and third base because that bat, if Rendon is the Rendon that he was at the start of the season... That bat, that presence in the lineup stretches this lineup out again, and he's going to draw walks. He's going to help Sean Owell move maybe to a spot where he's a bit more comfortable, and then Rendon can be somebody that is going to get on base, be a threat at the top of the order, but also be somebody that you can use in the field. And he's been pretty solid defensively and somebody that we can count on. So I would say that it needs to be Brandon Drury. I know that that puts a 
wrinkle in things with the trade deadline because you want Drury's value to go up, right? But I, I honestly think that because he hasn't been able to get on the field and he's had some issues when he's been on the field, that you got to go with the guys that have the hot bat. You got to go with the guys that have proven themselves and Drury hasn't proven himself. You'd rather see Miguel Sano over Brandon Drury? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I would because Drury just every time he's gotten in there, his 117 batting average hasn't been sexy. So I'd, I'd rather see <laughs> I'd rather see somebody that's at least at least making contact and and contributing in in some sort of way. Okay. I think it's Rendon, Sano, and Brandon Drury. I don't think that you even mess with the thought of not having Renhifo in there every single day. And I don't know, even know if I would want to take him away from third base. I mean, the guy's played a pretty spectacular third base. So maybe Sano and Rendon are just bebopping and scatting at DH, right? Like maybe they're just <laughs> switching in and out of DH and, and then you, you leave it at that because I think Renhifo is somebody who's really proven himself and you don't want to mess with Renhifo's rhythm. Guillaume is going to be an interesting one too, because I think yeah. he has another year of control and I wouldn't mind having him off the bench next season either. Even the remainder of this season, he's been really great, especially defensively. I think a lot of what we saw in terms of defensive success last uh, weekend had everything to do with your maybe being out there, uh, him and Neto turning double plays, things like that. So yeah, I think your is going to be an interesting equation as well. I'm, I'm interested to see, cause they have to make room. I'll be interested mm -hmm. to see who they make room uh, by moving down as somebody to make room for Rendon. When he comes back. Hey, thanks for making Locked on Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are playing the A's in Oakland, 640 Pacific time. And Jose Soriano starting. And it's getting louder. And Mike, do you hear the drums? I'm, they're playing the A's. Maybe it's <laughs> is it starting already. Oh, my gosh. Uh, listen, uh, you can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Locked on Angels, let's check in on the pitching side of things. We'll give you a little first half checkup on the pitchers of the Halos in just a minute. Hey, Locked on Angels is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We are big sports fans here. Obviously, we know that our everydayers are big sports fans. And FanDuel keeps you engaged whether your favorite sport is in season or out of season. All you got to do is open up the app and then dream up any bets anytime that you're in the mood. And what's great about FanDuel is this summer, they're hooking up every single customer with a boost or a bonus daily. Got to get the app to find out the specifics on the boost or the bonus, but they're bonus or there's something for everybody every single day, all summer long. So head to fanduel.com slash locked on, and you can start making the most out of this summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of major league baseball. This is the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And every day, if you need a new 24-7 sports fix, check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program just for you to bring you the top stories across the sports world. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, all the stuff you like about our show, but about the wide world of sports. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day speaking of your team every day the angels playing against oakland for like the first of like 100 games for the rest <laughs> of the season which is fine we'll with me it. we'll take if, it right yeah they can sweep them again uh they're playing at 6 40 pacific time you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast on sirius xm of the sxm app all you got to do is search angels let's check in on the pitchers johnny halfway through the season just a couple of games past the halfway point patrick sandoval said he had a brace inserted as part of his tommy john surgery so you might be asking what's the brace for it's inserted right after surgery so that the elbow is secured at a 60 to 90 degree angle that sounds comfortable <laughs> yeah right right like it just it feels like the seinfeld episode where the guy has the uh cast on and he's got his middle fingers wrapped up and George thinks that he flipped <laughs> off him and danny tartable that's what it feels like it's just kind of right there uh so the goal is to protect the healing tissue and reduce inflammation otani also received a similar brace when he had his surgery sandoval was told that the recovery would be 12 to 14 months so mm. this potentially puts him back with the angels between next june and next august john mm. the question is is that really going to be the case? When will we see Sandy again? You know, he's young, and I think he's got the ability to recover well. We haven't seen an injury with Patrick Sandoval, Mike, so it's it's really hard to tell how his body is going to respond to this. I mean, every pitcher seems to respond to this 
Tommy John slash elbow issue differently, especially when there's, you know, braces involved. I feel like it's changed a lot yeah. over the years, but you know, the fact that he's 27, he's still relatively young for uh MLB player. Of course, I think I would imagine his recovery will be on that timeline, 12 to 14 months. But look, if he's not back before the end of next season, I don't think that that's a big deal. Hmm. I think that if you prepare yourself for 2026 with Patrick Sandoval, I think that's where you want to be as a team. You want to, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't go into next season thinking, well, you know what? When Sandy comes back in September, we're really going to get yeah. rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's just no, there's no urgency. There's no push there. And there's not really a reason to do that. And you've got some capable guys kind of showing what they're about. And you have a lot of guys to give starts to in terms of Davis Daniel. You've got Sam Bachman working his way back. Chase Silseth should be on his way soon. Reed Detmers is still working on things. So as much as we feel like this rotation is depleted, well, they actually have some pretty decent options. And that's before an offseason even happens right. with this team. So if they're right. able to sign somebody and lock them up for what could be a competitive window, I'm saying maybe 2026 is when that window truly starts. Now, based on how this year goes, you might make the case that, hey, these guys made a lot of improvements. We got a full season of Ohapi. We got a full season of, of Neto. Maybe we could go for it next year. And so mm -hmm. that might be an option too. But again, I think 2026 is that competitive window. So I think it would behoove them to sign some frontline starter to help with this rotation and not have to worry about Patrick Sandoval coming back. Now, Mike, the Angels, who had another pitcher get Tommy John surgery, is Jose Quijada. Remember Quijada? Spicy. Remember, spicy. remember him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he recently made his second appearance on a rehab assignment on Saturday in the Arizona Complex League. He allowed one run across two appearances in the ACL so far. So he's pitched two innings, one hit, one home run, and five strikeouts. You like those numbers, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's got two years of arbitration left, 2025 and 2026. He'll be a free agent in 2027. So Mike, where does a fully recovered Jose Quijada fit into this bullpen? Well, if they trade Carlos Estevez, I think that he could be somebody that competes for the closer. Ah, role. Now I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember when did I go to that game last year? And he, he hit that guy and it was like the bases were loaded and I was sitting close. To it, was, I, it was, it was April. I said, I said, Hey, it's, it's time to take him out, Phil. Like yeah. we, everybody knew. Right. And so, Phil gave you a dirty look and, <laughs> and you were afraid for your life. Cause yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk trash. to Phil. He, he, he yelled at me. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, I'm the reason why I'm bringing that up is because, so that was April ish, right? We're in June a year later and Quijada is in the ACL. So mm -hmm. thinking about Sandoval, I mean, if that's kind of the, the timetable, that's I mean, 14 months. That's yeah. 14 months, right? Yeah. And and Quijada is not anywhere near coming back yet. So yeah. there's a there's a lot to do with him and there's a lot to do with Sandy. So I think that you are right and correct when you talk about like let Sandy not even be around next year. I think with Quijada, if we can get him back maybe after the All-Star break, maybe even after the trade deadline, then I think he can at least cons be considered to slot in in the closer role, because that was something that he had planned on doing and the angels mm -hmm. planned on doing with him and Estevez mm -hmm. at the start of last season. Hey, remember those times <laughs> at the yeah. start of last season? Like this yeah. was a, well, maybe this guy or maybe that guy. And then he gets hurt. And then Estevez ripped off what a bunch of saves in a row, 20 something in a row yeah. was really great and then fell apart and then fell apart again. And now he's, now he's back. So I think that he can slot in perhaps back of the bullpen, maybe even as closer. What do you think? Yeah, I think that especially if if Estevez is gone by the trade deadline, you have all the room in the world to see how Quijada recovers and maybe even let him compete with Ben Joyce for that ninth inning. I mean, the mm. way Joyce is pitching right now, I know they were up five in the ninth a, a couple of nights ago, but it was kind of fun to see him in that ninth inning, right. Mike. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> I think he enjoyed it too. He was think, so pumped when he left. Absolutely. Hey, Reed Detmer's most recent start, for AAA, Salt Lake, Salt Lake looked like this. Six innings pitch, four hits, three earned runs, two walks, 11 strikeouts, wow. and zero home runs. He had a 64% whiff percentage 
on the slider. So that's where all the strikeouts came from. So when you have a great first start from Davis Daniel, you've got Roncy Contreras kind of getting in there, giving you almost an opener role, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got Griffin Canning, Tyler Anderson, obviously Jose Soriano is going to be back tonight. What does this all mean? For Reed Detmers, Mike. I, I've been an advocate to keep him down as long as you need to keep him down. Hmm. I think you need to let him work through all of the yips. I think you need to let him work through all of the struggles and get him to a place where he is confident. I know that we saw him get confident when he got sent down last time, came back up, was really great. I'd love to see him be really confident. And honestly, even though we've had this nice kind of run recently, you don't need to rush read back because you do right. have Contreras and you do have Davis Daniel and you do have some of these other guys that can fill in. And uh, Kenny Rosenberg is now off the IL. So you can bring him up if you need to Reed's going to be a piece for the future. And so you want him to be a solid piece for the future, especially if you're not going to have Sandoval next year. So I think that you let him figure it out as long as he needs to figure it out. And something tells me that what they're going to be looking for is first pitch strikes and throwing a lot of strikes because that's what Wash said about Davis Daniel. He was like, hey, I didn't see him. I didn't know what he was doing in the minor leagues. The only report I paid attention to was that he was throwing strikes. Mm -hmm. And he did that tonight when, when Davis Daniel pitched last Thursday and went eight innings. Wash was impressed by that. So I think the Angels are going to be looking for that. So these numbers are great, John. I don't think these numbers are bad, but I think that what they're going to be looking for is first pitch strikes mm -hmm. and how many strikes compared to how many balls Reed Detmers is throwing throughout his entire start. Yeah. Two walks across six innings. Not bad at all. I right. mean, that's something that you want every single time. And look, Davis Daniel came up to the majors, I think with a five something ERA yeah, right. down in, in triple a. And, and look, that's, that's the nature of triple a. That's the nature of, of pitching in the PCL because it is a hitters league because right. of the high altitude. And so, Really, if you think about the inflation that happens, I know we hate talking about inflation right now, <laughs> but you think about the inflated numbers that happen, it doesn't really give you an accurate read, <laughs> read, but these numbers here, two walks, 11 Ks, that's a good ratio, Mike. And that's something that I'm confident that the angels will be looking at. Make sure that Detmers can do that a few more times before they decide to call him back up. Everydayers, Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. Two of those members are John and I, and we would love for you to join us on Price Picks. That's right. It's one of the most fun and exciting ways to get on all the action while you're watching your favorite sports and favorite players. And you can turn $10 into a thousand dollars. You can win up to a hundred times your money with Price Picks. All you need to do is pick just four, four correct picks. And it's not hard, right, Johnny? It's picking more or picking less on two to six players, their stat projections. So for example, you'll see like strikeouts. Oh, this person's going to strike out five and a half. And right. you decide if it's going to be more of that or less of that. I'm doing and, the, I'm doing the greater and less than yes. for my third grade math people out there. I thought there you, you were just throwing peace signs. Uh, <laughs> so what I like about price picks is that for just between you and me, it's not that hard. <laughs> they, no. they, they, they make it so easy for you. So you should download the app today and then we'll make it even easier. Enter our promo code locked on MLB. You'll get a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. Locked on MLB is the promo code, all lowercase, all one word. Join price picks today. You can pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And locked on angels is brought to you by our friends at tax network USA. Just because tax season is over. Whew, everybody take a deep breath. Just remember, though, that the IRS is not going to stop coming after you for those unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages. They can levy your bank accounts. They can even seize your property. Man, you don't want that. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. They got over 14 years of experience, an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. I actually checked in with them to get some wisdom on my taxes, and they were so helpful. They've saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. So whether you owe taxes, you've got really complicated matters, or you got some extra money you're just not sure what to do with, you can visit their website, tnusa.com slash locked on. Hey, let's celebrate Logan Ohapi a little bit, Mike. His month of June was pretty incredible. Now, yeah. I, I just want to read these numbers off here. Uh, he hit 324 batting average, a 363 on base, and a 608 slugging. Wow. 
which gives was from five home runs, six doubles, 12 RBIs across 22 games. Now, I saved this anecdote because I was going to bring it up in our earlier conversation about Trout's return. Okay. And what you said was a conundrum. And this was interesting to me. Uh, this came from an article from The Athletic, courtesy of Sam Blum, who spoke to Logan Ohapi. He spoke to his teammates. And this came from Taylor Ward. Mike, listen to this. Okay. He is our captain. I think he's the leader of this team. I believe wholeheartedly in him. He's a leader, a born leader. Wow. That to me says a whole lot. And Sam even mentioned in the article that, you know, Trout's seen as the quiet leader, but he's never been the vocal guy. And yeah. he also mentioned at the beginning of, uh, I think it was spring training, that Ron Washington said, man, I got to stick a pin in that guy and let some of the air out and let him <laughs> deflate a little bit because his yeah. energy is just through the roof. And so yeah. he's the guy, Mike, that I think we've been waiting for for a real long time. Hmm. Now, Neto, to me, also shows those leadership qualities, but he's also, he's a quiet dude. He's pretty yeah. quiet, like yeah. pretty mild mannered. Chill is a good word. That's what I think. So that's an interesting anecdote from hmm. Taylor Ward. Why don't you get into some interesting numbers from last year compared to this year? Yeah, so this is pretty interesting. Before his injury in 2023, Logan Ohapi was on pace for 24 home runs, a 2.4 war while holding a 139 weighted runs created plus. Well, great numbers, right? So far this season, Ohapi is holding the same offensive pace. He's on pace for 24 home runs, 2.6 war, and a weighted runs created plus of over 120. Did, did Taylor Blake Ward tweet that? I thought he I did. saw that yep. out there. Yes, yes. Just want to make sure we gave him, gave him a shout out for that because yep. what a great comparison. Absolutely. One of, our, one of our favorites, and I love that he gives us those stats. I loved those stats because we were really thinking that maybe perhaps Logan Ohapi last year was going to be somebody that could help get Trout and Otani to the playoffs. And then, mm -hmm. of course, he had the arm issue, which was just really heartbreaking, then comes back and hits 400 home runs in the final <laughs> month of the season, right? like that, just, That's what it felt like, right? It did, and just looked great. What I like about what we're seeing from this Ohapi right now is that he's not just swinging for the fences. Mm -hmm. He is somebody that is hitting the gap. He is somebody that's going from right to left. He's mm -hmm. going down the lines. And then he's hitting his pitches. We've seen the home runs really get amped up recently, especially the late inning home runs. And honestly, John, I'm a huge fan of first through fifth inning doubles and singles, yeah. RBIs. I'm a huger fan. Is that a word? Huger? I'm a bigger fan. Huge. Of, huge. I'm a bigger fan of meaningful home runs, yeah. not just – Man, I, I, I popped one in the first. That's great. And I'm going to celebrate that. Don't get me wrong. But I love the meaningful Logan Ohapi home runs that we've seen in mm -hmm. the last couple of games and all throughout June. That guy, to me, is somebody that is an all-star. Mm. But do you think that he'll get there, Johnny? Yeah, I'm, the competition in front of him, obviously, it's not going to happen through the voting, right, Mike? Right. But to get an all-star nod as one of the catchers who's going to be there, obviously, you got to get through Adley Rutschman, you got to get through Salvador Perez, who's having like a career renaissance right. with the Royals. Yeah. And then, you know, you get down the list and there's Logan O'Hoppy. And I think he belongs right up there with those guys. And and so if he gets a nod because he gets selected, I think that that would be super fantastic. Mike, somebody else that I think should be an all-star is Luis Renjifo. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason why the guy who's leading the league in batting average has close to if not the same ish numbers as a Bobby Witt Jr. Who, yeah. you know, was like given the red carpet to go <laughs> into the, uh, into the all-star game, but that's some pretty good company. And so I think Ren Hifo certainly should get the nod as well. I mean, why wouldn't you want him right. on your team playing a couple of innings out there? And it's a good showcase for, Hey, anybody want to take a look at Ren Hifo and, give up a couple of prospects for him. I mean, I think that would be a great thing as well. But Mike, for you, Ohapi, you see him as an all-star. Who else is an all-star for you? Yeah, I think Red Hufo's on that list. And then, of course, I'm going to say Tyler Anderson. I can't think mm -hmm. of anybody else on this team that is deserving. I think if we were going to stretch it a bit, I would throw Zach Neto's name in there mm -hmm. simply because Zach has those intangibles that you can't measure. Now, mm -hmm. you don't make the all-star team 
because you have intangibles that you can't measure. Sure. And so, but he's got that Gary D. Sarcina vibe to him. Gary D. Sarcina was somebody that really held the angels together in the nineties and, and was just a great shortstop. Wasn't fantastic. Did have an mm. all-star appearance and he had a really great season when he got injured. That's when the angels really fell off. And he was somebody that was kind of the glue that held it together, but he's got that kind of vibe and maybe even a little bit more gritty gutty. I think maybe more Derek Jeter than Gary Desar, but mm. I, I would say if we're going to stretch it a bit, I think that Zach Neto should at least get some consideration for being a backup, being put on the roster, because I think that this guy is going to be along with Logan Ohapi going to be the pillars for the angels moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned Logan, you mentioned Neto, obviously would make a great case for the all-star all-star team. One name that's part of this young core, Nolan Shawnawell. Mm -hmm. And just doing a quick little first half checkup. He's not, Got a great average right now, which is kind of surprising given what we saw at the end of last season. Of course, that was a very small sample size. What do you think is going to happen with Sean Well the rest of this year? What do you say? I think that he's figuring it out, John. And I think that yeah. maybe perhaps the narrative of him you know, needing to hit home runs might have gotten in his head. Definitely at the that, beginning, yeah. I, I think that what Wash said to, to Neto might be the same narrative that he's saying to a lot of the players. Remember when Neto went off and he was not doing well and he grabbed the iPad and Wash said, you're not going to yeah. find what's wrong looking at that. Yeah. He said, stop swinging for the fences. I think that's the key to Nolan Shawnawell's approach is you got to slap that ball everywhere. Look at what Ren Hifo's doing. Yeah. He's slapping the ball everywhere. At and, the expense of power too. Yes. And I think that that will also help with Shawnawell's eye at the plate because yeah. his on base percentage hasn't been what it was last year. And notice that he's brought his hands down a bit. The, mm -hmm. the bat is more out in front rather than back and up over. And I've always felt like you have a lot of, I know he has kind of a kick, but he has a lot of movement before he gets he's there. Six foot four, Mike. Yeah. You get a lot of, you have a lot of movement before you get there. And I think that that's kind of been his issue. And maybe why, because he switched, maybe why we're seeing a bit more of an improvement. Same thing with Joe Adele, right? Like mm -hmm. the long swings, getting your hands from where they are to where they need to be. That bat just needs to rest on your shoulder. It needs to rest just behind your head and let your hands go straight through. In fact, there was a great quote that we'll share this week uh, on one of our upcoming episodes from George Brett, who's like, this launch angle nonsense is ridiculous. And oh, so no. <laughs> I, I, I want to I share that with you on one of our episodes this week because he's somebody, of course, over 3,000 hits, who's like, there's a better way to go about this and, and baseball players need to know this and I want to be somebody that communicates this because these hitting coaches are not doing it or the players are not listening. Yeah, I would certainly listen to George Brett if I right? were one of these guys. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, give me a lot of pine tar and an angry face, and I'll go and get 3,000 hits. <laughs> go beat somebody up. <laughs> hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your very first listen of the day. The Angels play the A's in Oakland at 640 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels. Connect with Mike and I at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't checked it out already, launched a new newsletter for Super Halo Bros that you can check out in the episode description below. It's a sub stack, and I'll be writing articles there talking about the Halos a little bit more. And I just finished the ultimate Los Angeles Angels MLB trade deadline guide. So Woo. say that three times fast and then get into the article because I talk about everybody who should be traded, could be traded, and must be traded. Mike, what do we have on deck for Wednesday's show. Well, you may have heard this name, Keston Hera. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's somebody that Angel fans have been talking about because he's playing at AAA Salt Lake and he's doing pretty good, John. Yeah. So we're going to share some of his stats, what he had been doing and where he's at now. We'll share a bit of his career and we'll talk about why you need to pay attention to him tomorrow on Lockdown, Lockdown Angels. And of course, we'll be recapping that Oakland game for you. Until then, my name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday. You know, John, the Angels didn't have a winning streak until you got the standing desk. So I think we all should just say thank you to you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> my legs are tired.